Hey guys, RC here. We're back with Bowlbound College Football. This is our American football journeyman save where we are going up the career ladder, hopefully, uh, if we can uh, ever figure out a way to win a few games uh, here at Louisiana Lafayette on the opening stop of our career path. Uh, this is episode 13, 13, and uh, just catching you up to date uh, for this season, we won our season opener against Akron, lost games against Buffalo and Ohio, and then our conference opener against Arkansas State, although we were at least competitive. And then we actually manhandled North Texas, winning by 11. So today we've got uh, three road games at Kansas State, ranked number 21 in the nation, at Middle Tennessee State, and at Troy. Just to give you an idea, if you're if you're not American or you're not following college football, uh, there are I don't know 108, I think, Division One programs. So, picture if you're comparing this to Football Manager, let's say, so you have your top 25, which is like your premier and your championship sides, uh, and then you have um your mid-level conferences which would be league one league two league one and then you have your second your uh your division two uh you know or your lower conference teams that are would be you know um the Vonorama's north south really getting down the pyramid so a club like ours with a 30 prestige a 29 prestige uh, playing a number 21 team, this would be your FA Cup type matchup where you've got a uh, uh, six, sixth or seventh tier team pairing up against, uh, you know, at probably a mid level, mid to low level Premier League side. Uh, you know, we should just get blown off the face of the earth. Uh, it shouldn't even be close. But anyway, just to give you an idea. Um, of what the gap in talent should be here uh, and realizing that we've got our work cut out for us. All right, but we are on the road. Let's get into it. Uh, we are 6-11 and 11 all time, 5-4 uh, and four in conference, so that's positive. And we are 1-1 one and one in the conference this year. Just to remind you of the standings, we are currently uh, third, tied for third in the conference. Because remember, the conference mark is calculated separately from your overall record. Your overall record is what you have to have to qualify for postseason play, a bowl game, uh, or playoffs, or whatever. And your conference record uh, is only for the conference standings and the conference championship. So, you know, you could technically win the conference and have a losing record overall. So don't let that freak you out. All right, let's uh, let's get into today. I've already gone through all my stuff here, and we are 25-point underdogs, so they should beat us by more than three touchdowns. That's why we play the game, though, right? Let's go find out. Also, I will try to remember to reposition my game. Uh, a lot of the Previous episodes I, I did in blocks. Uh, I will be recording a block today, but you'll notice I've moved the game up higher to where my picture is not blocking it. Uh, I was noticing that while I was rendering uh, recent episodes, and I went, I got to remember to fix that. Um, I did read the sticky note and remember to move my microphone at least today. Uh, you can see we have gotten dominated. 45 to 10 is the final. Uh, they scored 28 unanswered points, four touchdowns in the second half alone. So not great. Uh, 576 total yards to 265. We were held to negative yards rushing. You have to keep in mind if you're if you're wondering how that can be. Uh, anytime you are tackled behind the line of scrimmage, which is where the ball starts, uh, that counts as a negative play and gets deducted from your yardage as a team and your individual players' uh, stats as well. Uh, also, quarterback sacks. Uh, if the quarterback is sacked on a pass play, uh, that also goes uh, as a negative play into rushing, even though it was not going to be a rushing play. 
just is what it is. Now, I do spot some good news here. 20 out of 53, still well below the 50% that I like. Um, we held them almost to 50%, so that's positive. Uh, but, you know, and only one interception, so that's, that's a win there. Uh, we didn't have any fumbles and only the one interception, so that's good. Just couldn't compete with these guys. Uh, Williams did get the start. We talked about that. 16 out of 39. And then uh, Weaver, 4 of 14. I did try a little differently. Uh, instead of 100% on Williams, I did 80-20 on short yard or regular plays. And then third down, I went 100% with Williams. But looking at Weaver's stats here, uh, I think I've got to go to Williams 100% of the time. And you can see Gore, 30 carries, 246 yards, over 8 yards a carry. And you might remember last episode, I gave you kind of a target number. Uh, to be successful running, you have to be uh, at or above 4, 4.5 yards a carry. So not what we're doing. <laughs> not what we're doing. I wanted to pop in here, so we're going into the, this is another week where we can add extra hours of study hall, and remember I gave you guys that tip early on that if you set your game options to let the AI control academics, at some point you're going to run out of hours, but you can see that we've actually gotten more hours put in by the AI, so it does work out. All right, we're coming into week nine. We are on the road again against Middle Tennessee State. This is a conference matchup, and we are nine-point underdogs. Uh, we rank 40th offensively. They rank 103rd, but we rank 104th defensively. They rank 29th. So we might get our yardage, but they don't give up. All, you know, we give up a lot more. So... We'll see what happens. Uh, we're now relying no longer on our tight end uh, Fleming because he is hurt. Uh, he's probable, so he's down to second string today, uh, but should see plenty of playing time. So let's see what happens. And some good news. We have won 26-23. And if we take a look down in the fourth quarter, uh, we were down 20-13. Uh, to 13. Middle Tennessee got a 42-yard uh, field goal to go up by 10 points at the 722 left mark. And the times here, just in case you haven't picked up on it, this is how much time is left in the game or in the quarter. Uh, so with 722 left in the game, uh, and that's, that's the opposite of what you see in European football where it counts up. Uh, so a little different, but 722 left. We got an 11 yard touchdown pass from Williams to White. And then with no time left on the clock, down by four, a field goal doesn't do us any good. We have to go for it from the two yard line and we get a two yard pass from Will Carlos Williams to Chris Tucker and we win 26-23. So big comeback win there. Uh, we did give up the 63 yard. Uh, touchdown pass there, and only a couple of field goals for us, but uh, Michael Miller with a run. So we went, we uh, had 10 more first downs, uh, 436 to 339 on the yardage. Again, you can see we're not running the ball very well, and that could be down to having the wrong plays picked. It could just be having a very poor run blocking offensive line. Uh, a low quality running back, a combination of all of the above, which is probably what it is. Uh, but you can see 0 0.9 yards per carry. So we probably actually want to get farther away from that. But I feel it's, you know, you kind of want to have a little bit of, you don't want to go so heavy in one direction, uh, you know, although we are in a very pass heavy attack. And you can see 69 pass. To, four, uh, to 15 rushes. So we are certainly one-dimensional, but we're doing enough to hopefully keep the other team honest. The good news is, against a club that's in our pay grade, so to speak, at our level, 
Uh, we went 42 out of 69, and if we use our old uh, double math calculation, 50% would be 42 out of 84. So we are well over. We're up into that 70 percentile here. Uh, so that is great. One interception, two fumbles. So that's that's a concern, and that probably led to costing us some points. Uh, we did miss one field goal, one extra point as well, uh, but we were five of five in the red zone. So what the red zone is, is it, from the 20-yard line to the goal line on each half of the field, but what, what they're talking about in the offensive end. So basically in European football, that would be the attacking third. So when your wingers and strikers are pushing up towards goal, that would be in the red zone. That's what the red zone is. And this is your efficiency. How many times we got in the red zone? Five. And how many times we scored in the red zone? Five. And that could be either a touchdown or a field goal. And you want that to be as close to 100% as you can. Very good game by Williams. Two touchdowns, one interception. 2.8 yards a carry for Miller. Not the greatest. Parker, eight catches, 106 yards, and one drop. Fleming had eight catches for 83 yards, uh, 15 yards after the catch, so that was pretty good. And we'll just kind of scroll down through here. Uh, Williams had a fumble that he lost. Parker lost a fumble, and Fountain recovered a fumble. And Scott Anderson of uh, Middle Tennessee was the player of the game, so... Kudos to him. That doesn't happen very often, a player from the losing side uh, getting the player of the game or man of the match. Uh, Louisiana Monroe won again, big time, 40-13. to 13. They're now 7-2 and two on the season. Arkansas State played an out-of-conference game against Pittsburgh, and they are 1-8 and eight on the season. After the two matches so far today, we are now second in the league. Two and one in conference. So only one game back in the loss column, which is which is where you're looking at. So we have basically two games in hand. Uh, and again, I, I will try to compare to football manager European football verbiage just to help you guys understand because you know, a lot of you have told me you're trying to learn or understand the game. So again, any questions, ask them in the comments down below, and I will do my best to educate you just a little bit on our version of football. Uh, but we are three and four overall. You can see our conference as a whole does not do very well, although Louisiana Monroe is certainly the exception this year. And at seven and two, they are already bowl eligible, not to mention they will get an automatic bowl berth by winning our conference. Uh, the, even the low conferences have a, at least one bowl tie-in that you will be invited to for winning that league. So this upcoming week, we're traveling to Troy. Troy's right behind us. So again, this will be a good barometer match for us on where we're at. You'll notice we did not have a visit to set up this week. Again, you only set up visits uh, on the weeks that you are playing at home. Fleming must have got dinged up a little bit, a stress fracture in his foot. He's dropped down, uh, way down the depth chart. I want to try something a little differently this match, or this game. So I showed you guys in recruiting on how to set, how to do your training for, you know, your bulk training for one whole position. Well, right here, you can see we've got the starting time. So what this tells you is my left guard is going to play every snap of the game unless he gets hurt. And then if he gets hurt, then your second string guy will come in and play every snap. Well, on my running back, my first string guy will only play seven out of 10 snaps. And then my second string and third string will rotate on those other three plays. So my second string should get two, maybe three of those. And then every once in a while, uh, yeah, it's a random random generator, I guess, uh, that third string running back could get a, a, a carry here and there. But what we can do is, let's say I want to set everybody to 80%. I'm going to hit 80 and enter uh, and save changes. It'll tell you you've set all starters to a non-zero. 
and I will say yes. So now everybody is 80, and then I'm going to go back into my quarterback, and we're going to do that to all right, save changes, and okay, so we we did the override to get everybody to 80, and then I had to hit no to change those because this is still there. So I just want to play my starters more often because my starters should be my best players. Now, it's honestly, I have, I've gone and played 100% at every position unless I had a good backup. Uh, at, you know, but, and the lower down you are, just like in Football Manager, you're going to be more dependent on just a couple of guys. Uh, whereas when you get up to the the upper levels, the Premier League, if you will, you know you may have you know World Cup quality players sitting on the bench. Same thing here. You may have you know uh, Alabama, for example. They've usually got five really good running backs, and all even the fifth string guy could be a starter for ninety percent of the schools out there, even in the even in the first division, so to speak. Uh, but let's move to defense, and I want to put this one to 85%. Again, have my best guys on the field as possible. All right, we are two-point underdogs. Again, being at home is typically worth, in, in, a, in betting vernacular, is worth three points. So we're, we're only two-point underdogs, which is basically makes this a pick -em game. Vegas says either one of these teams could win. So let's go ahead and sim the week and see what happens. All right. Well, this was an interesting game. Just kind of looking, we had a couple more first downs, uh, about 120 more yards. The, the lack of rushing doesn't surprise me. 32 out of 63, so we were right at that 50 threshold that uh, I would like to be north of. But uh, we're right there. But what I do notice is we led 24 to 6 in this game and lost. So they got three unanswered touchdowns, including, much like last game for us, uh, they got an eight yard touchdown pass with no time on the clock. So literally, the final play of the game. If they score, they win. If they don't score, they lose. And they scored. Oh, that's harsh. That's rough. That is rough. All right, Williams. So we had, remember, we put Williams at 100%, but Weaver played 11 snaps. I wonder if Williams got hurt in this one. Now, Williams did have a 94-yard pass. That was the opening score for us. 94-yard bomb to Arnold Levesque. So that's good. Miller had eight carries for 30 yards. That's his best game in quite a while. And then uh, Doss actually averaged four yards a carry. Levesque only had the one catch, but it was for 94 yards. And you can see 17 yards after the catch, which meant this was a deep bomb. And the pass went 77 yards in the air from the quarter line of scrimmage to where Levesque caught it, and then he ran another 17 yards after the catch, all on the same play. Wow, that's pretty impressive. All right, we've got uh, fumbles. So no lost fumbles, that's good. Even though we've got our field goal set to 40 yards, we still missed one. And Dana Burks, player of the game, that would be uh, Troy's quarterback. Three touchdowns, two interceptions in front of 19,300 people. All right, well, that is, uh, that's disappointing because that's the difference between being three and five and four and four on the season and two and two or three and one in, uh, two, and, two and two or three and one in conference. So we fall all the way down to fifth position. Troy climbs above us. That's disappointing. Uh, let's check our injuries because, okay, Williams is not injured. Now, here's something else. Remember, Williams was only rated three out of five, but now that he's played some games, he's improved to four out of five on the season. 
Uh, so you can see we now have a cup, uh, you know, three guys that are uh, three star quality, basically, uh, with those ratings. They're all juniors. And this is why it's important to try to redshirt, uh, especially at lower levels. The players don't develop as fast because your development coaching is not as good. And so you do want that extra year of development to help them reach their maximum potential. Um, and this is, you know, due to just the training ability, uh, very much similar to your uh, training facilities in Football Manager. The lower they are, the harder it is to see your guys get to their maximum potential. So you may have that five-star guy, but he only becomes a three-star player. Uh, here we've got basically three-star players that you know we hope become three-star and not just a, a two-star or a one-and-a-half star. So we do have a couple of injuries. Uh, so a torn PCL, so Goodwin is out for the season, I would bet. Gene has elbow inflammation. Fleming, that stress fracture. Costello, a shoulder laceration. A skull fracture for Hayes and a shoulder laceration for Yarbrough. A couple of guys flunked out, and then we have the five guys that we have redshirted. Uh, now, four of them we chose to redshirt, and then one was due to being a transfer. So he'll be in as a, a sophomore next season. Uh, and we'll look forward to that. I'm going to end the episode here, guys. We will come back. We'll have one more episode this season uh, for the regular season, and we will do the final four matches, uh, four games of the season. And I will, you will find that I will slip into European football vernacular sometimes. So if you're an American watching this, it's just I do. 95% of my channel is football manager. Uh, so, and I, I do try to explain it because I do have a lot of European uh, football manager people on the channel. So, uh, you know, I do try to a lot. That's relative, but you, you guys know what I'm saying. So we'll come back. We'll play the two Florida teams, uh, Louisiana Monroe in our rivalry showdown. And then the last uh, out of conference match uh, against Toledo to end the season. And uh, we'll see if we can somehow get three more wins out of these last four games because we need to get to six to be bowl eligible. And remember, we scheduled some pretty easy teams. But, you know, the old saying, if, you're, if you look around the poker table and you're not sure who the, who the, who the ringer is there, it's you. You know, who, who the easy, easy target is, it's you. Uh, so we went with easy guys, and we've lost two out of three. So they were happy to schedule us because we were worse than them. <laughs> All right, guys, hit the like button, subscribe, and we will see you next episode. Have a good one. Bye.